Okay, so let's dive into part three now. So, and I hope you're sticking with me, like I said at the end of the previous one. This will come together. We are going to get there. It's just, you know, a matter of doing it. So, a couple other stencils I wanted to show you from that Gumroad uh, group. One of them is this one, which is Ocean Foam. And I want to show you some ways you can use this, again, to try and help, uh, you know, make your life easier. You can do all this hand painted, and that's fine but this will help make it a little bit easier. So I've got the color I chose here is just one of this lighter version of one of these purplish colors. So I'm just going to brush this in. Okay. And I got a little bit of overspray here, so I'll just erase that real quick. All right. Now move the stencil, spacebar, slide it over. A little bit of an overspray there. It's not really going to matter. I just don't want that line. All right. So Shift, Control, Alt, T, which why it's all those, I have no idea. But anyway, that's what it is. I'm going to go to make sure on this one right here. So you have Transform Linear, you have Transform Free. And I want to move it down. And this one lets you kind of drop stuff into perspective. So, we're just going to stretch this out. Like so. All right, and then tell it OK to commit. And all it's doing is laying in that lace work of the foam that would be there. Then we can take our brush, bring it back down in size, and really lightly start. Um, oh, whoops! It didn't the the uh, Z didn't kick in. I was like, why is this not painting? I was on an eraser. So start kind of lightly adding to this. like this, so that you're really getting it kind of laid in there, and that gives you a little bit of guide. For it. Okay. Can do another layer. Do this again. And if you really want to mix it up so that it looks more random, just turn the stencil. Alt allows you to twist it. And move the stencil out of the way. Shift Control Alt T again. And you can even overlap it ever so slightly. Like so. Move the stencil out of the way. Grab some of this lighter yellow color to kind of have it start fading into that. So again, you're trying to harmonize the colors by repeating them in different spots. Okay. 
So that is starting to come over there. We can take this and kind of come over it. Like so. Sprinkle it in here. Just kind of scrub in, remembering the shape of where it's going, the direction. All right, now that's starting to lay in there really well. We can even take, lay in a little bit of this here and there to kind of pull some of that together. Control Z if you don't like how something looks. And I'm going to switch to eraser, but I'm going to switch to kneaded eraser because I want to soften some of this, but I don't necessarily want to get rid of it completely. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do here, so we've got this one, this one, and this one, right? So let's take these, and we're going to merge, layer down, merge, layer down. So now we have that foam and stuff all on the top one there. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we can make another layer here. And what I want to do is this kind of purplish color. I want to go with a dark color here. And I'm going to use the pencil. And what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to zoom in. Actually, let's try the marker tool. Okay, so I want to go under here because this is going to have a shadow. It'll actually be fairly intense, but I do want to soften the edges just slightly. If you want to give this some real dimension, what you can do is take, so let me do this, let me grab this color. And kind of pull it out from the direction the sun's coming. And really give it some uh, dimension there. And you can take the eraser and lightly sharpen up some of those edges. Like so. Okay. And see how that starts giving it the feeling that it's really sitting on top of there. So let's just kind of carry this across. Like 
like so. Jump back to our palette knife, like so. Just going vertical. And that's really giving that feeling that that foam is sitting on top of there. Now you can even go into some of here and change some of this, because some of this has holes in it where we didn't paint in it. And that can help. You can drop down, come back up here, and lay a little bit in. You could also, if you need to, go to a different layer and add a little bit in to help break it up. I want to vignette that a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of dark to it over here. Go back to my palette knife. Up and down. Like so. Okay. And then I want to take, say, maybe this marker tool. Kind of define some of these areas through here. Maybe add a trough over here. Again, soften it out. Raise it down. Like so. So that starts to give us some of that look that we want for that part. Now then, I'm going to get rid of this stencil. I have another one that is pebbles. I'm going to put this on another layer. Stretch this out just a little bit. And pick kind of this bluish color, maybe this tannish color. There we go. And I'm just going to use the roller brush to brush this in because it'll give it kind of a gradated splotchy that I want. Trying to change these up a little bit just to kind of have where they're hitting. Like so. Get rid of any of them that oversprayed over this top. Erase them here and there to kind of soften them back more. So that really gives that look for the beach to kind of have pebbles and that stuff. So this is at 100%. Now you can go in with these if you want to with like your pencil tool. You can, um, oops, you can lock the layer. Okay. And it really, well, maybe airbrush might work a little better for this. But let's say we grab a little bit of that goldish color. You can soften some of these. You can go with the pencil and kind of highlight them towards the side with the sun. 
you can select some of the darker kind of highlight them on the bottom I mean dark or shadow them on the bottom But that really helps. To kind of seat them a little bit. Okay. Now if you copy that layer. So. Duplicate. Bring it down. Set the blend mode. To multiply. Turn off lock transparency. Control B to blur. Just the slightest blur. Slightest blur, not 100. And then lower the transparency. Shift Control Alt T. Move it down just like one or two. Tell it OK. You could also go to Layer Effects, make it active. And then change all your settings there so it looks right. Now, one trick I want to show you real quick is that if you tried to blend, like say you wanted to merge those stones all together to with like this layer, if you did it like merge this to here, it, it can change the way it looks. So what I like to do is go to here. Turn all the rest of those off and do merge visible layers. And then turn these back on. It just helps it seat better. Okay. All right. So, don't need this one. Remove that. And we need to really kind of sharpen some of these. So let's go to our custom brush and let's change brushes. Artistic. Crystal worn. All right, let me make a new layer above it. So, what I want to do is capture some of this color over here so that it's falling over like so and we can kind of Blend it in some of here, like so. Can select that one, come straight across. So that we're kind of fading this out. 
go to our pellet knife, bring it way down. Kind of soften that a little bit too, like so. All right, so I want to do a little bit more refining of some of these edges to make them look a little better. So, this is where the oil brush can come in. And you've got some options here. You can take this, go straight across. Well, the because this is a, a violet, kind of a red violet, the green is going to be the complementary. So I'm going to bring this over to here. Go with this one. Still a little too close to it. Go a little bit lighter. There we go. And start painting this in. We can also use the marker tool for this one as well. It's really kind of whatever you prefer. I like to go back and forth between these two, to be honest. Okay, now what I'm thinking of right now is, is how is that light kind of coming across and hitting some of this foam? Whoops. That was a little too pushed in. A little too much pressure. So I can kind of sharpen this back edge. And then I can take the um, palette knife. Kind of soften this front section. This is like highlighting clouds, really. But I just want to kind of fade it into itself so it's not such a harsh line, but it's still there. And so it kind of breaks it up for where the harsh line is and where the soft line is. You can also use the airbrush. So if you want to use the airbrush, for this, you've got the presets, the big and subtle. Tendrils works really well. So we just bring that down. This becomes one of those things where you can sit here and really kind of take your time and build up the edges as much as or as little as you want. So that you're getting that really kind of finish to it. That you're looking for and that's just a matter of kind of going back and forth through some of this these troughs and highlights And really kind of building these out the way that you want them. And this is all just a matter of patience and taste and figuring out what you need and what you want.
And one of the things I like to do with this part over here is go to the presets, go to textures, go to lichen. And it's a matter of finding the right size. But let's say if you wanted some surf coming in here, you could do that. And then if you don't like where it's at, just by having it on a new layer by itself, you can erase and push some of it back here and there so it looks like it's kind of falling into shadow. And bunching around. So it's still not that turbulent, but you got some of that motion from the ocean. <laughs> the motion of it kind of going in and following around. Like so. But again, zoom out, take a look, see where you're at. You can see where that's starting to pull it all together for how some of that's looking. Then you can take, for example, the airbrush, bring it up just a little bit, probably go back to the slow flow, and go straight down. But really, let me show you a better way to do this. Let's go to a layer. Let's go to blend mode. Let's go to overlay. And bring that really down through there. Like so. And kind of lighten that up. You can use this to really kind of capture some of that glow. Like so. And then soften that out. Like so. Now you can do the, uh, another thing you can do is kind of the opposite, which is blend mode, then go to multiply. And if you take and go to this blue color, and say the airbrush, you can add in some extra shadow here and there to really kind of vignette. some of this in. Like so. Okay. All right. So we've got that there. I'm going to take this, soften it just ever so slightly. And then we've got a good portion of this beach done. Now, if you want to zoom in and really kind of look for spots that need to be fixed and refined, like that little dimple right there, um, what you can do is go ahead, if you're going to do this part, you really can go ahead and merge everything. So it all looks nice. 
and then come in and start fixing. I still recommend doing it on another layer, but start fixing some of these. Any issues like that. And looking for places that you can really kind of update. Now one thing along here that I would like to put is grabbing a little bit of that pencil. Let's go to fine coloring. Nope. Kind of this silver lining. like so. And with this you could really play around with the look and feel of what you're doing. To get those fine little touches. I like to go and find these little areas where I've kind of had a back and forth swash of color there and soften it so it kind of fades into the back. Kind of like so. So that way you can just really start kind of bringing it together a little more, tying it in. Now this is up to you totally how much you want to do this. Um, don't do it too much and it, where the fact that you're just kind of puttering around with it and playing. Instead do um, just what's needed. to kind of soften areas, strengthen areas, pull areas together. Because you, you've got a nice impressionistic painting here that, you know, remember, these uh, painting is going to be viewed from six feet away. So you don't have to have, I mean, unless you're doing ultra-realism. If you're doing realism, then yeah, spend all your time going here and, and really update it. If you're doing more impressionistic, then it's really going to be more about how do I um, make it give that impression of something from a little bit of a distance, you know? Uh, and that's really the main thing with it. So I do want to work on these clouds just a little more. So I'm going to go with this old gouache brush. I'm going to zoom in to 100%. A nice light color here. And almost white. See how that looks. Yeah. I want to kind of bring out some of the streakiness. Really kind of make it 
Like it's glowing in. There we go, for that. I want to add to the wispiness of these clouds. You know, like those ones that kind of flow in before a real bad storm. And I think I lost a little bit of my overlay when I blended this down, so I'm going to add that back just ever so slightly. I really want that glow. I may even do... some lens flare kind of stuff. All right, so I think that's good for this one. And, you know, again, you can sit here and refine it and play around with it as much as you need to. But the point of this is to show you, hey, here's some ways to do this. Um, so that way you can really practice it on your own. So take a look at it. Give it a try. Let me know what you uh, learned from it, what you had questions about, and how I can help. So, But hopefully this gives you enough ideas of things to try. And make sure if you, um, if you have a chance and you want to learn more stuff like this, come over to my Patreon and you know uh, join there. Also, 
if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Please share this with others. It really helps out and, you know, really uh, can grow the channel quite a bit, which is my intention to do so. But I would love to know what you need help with, what you had questions about, what I could have answered better in this and kind of go from there. So I appreciate you hanging in for the workshop. Hopefully, hopefully you can see how it uh, turned out and you like it and you're following along and can show me what you've done. So come join on Facebook, come join me on Twitter, come join me on Instagram, come join me on uh, Patreon. Just, hey, just come join me. <laughs> All right. So thanks again for watching. Hope you got something out of it.